an online course called Develop and Implement SDI for the SDGs. Um, I am Stephanie Rambler. I'm a Sustainable Development Officer in the Division for Sustainable Development Goals in DESA. I'm also the project manager for the UN Peace and Development Fund Trust Fund project that financed the development of this course. So I'd like to thank the Trust Fund for its support before we get started. Uh, the MOOC itself is a partnership between our division, the Division for Sustainable Development Goals and UNITAR. And so we're very excited to launch it today. Um, and we encourage you all to take a look at it, spread the word to your networks and um, we really want to encourage you. It's open, it's free of charge, and I think it will be very valuable for many different types of users. So please spread the word. Um, in today's program, you'll be hearing more about the course itself and also related work streams that are going on in various parts of the UN and our partners. Um, so I think it will be a very rich program. And again, welcome to everyone. Uh, I just like to do the standard housekeeping. Please mute mute your mics. Um, we'll see how the bandwidth goes. Might be best to keep your video off if you're not speaking and then um, and turn it on when you are speaking. Uh, the chat will be open and hopefully active, so please uh, add any comments or questions into the chat box. There also will be a Q&A se session later on for uh, raising hand and coming on screen and, and asking questions live, so uh, please please engage in that as well. Um, just a quick note, we are recording this session, so um, just so that you all know that, and also it will be available on our website later for any colleagues who were not able to join the event this morning. Um, and that's all for me. I would like to now turn it over to our first speaker, um, Mr. Alex Richard Roll, Richard Alex Roll, who is the Senior Economic Affairs Officer in our division. And Alex, over to you. Thank you, Stephanie. There's really my great privilege and pleasure to, to welcome you all here today for this briefing on supporting national capacities through the Partnership in Action. So what is this about? It's a launch of a massive open online course on implementing science, technology and innovation for SDGs roadmaps. There's level one, so presumably there will be much more to follow. There's lots of speakers in this in this session, and I don't want to take too much time. I just want to let you know that you know this ex exercise on roadmaps has a very long history, going back more than ten years, when the SDGs in Rio Plus Twenty were um, uh, put on the agenda as a, as a possibility. One of the things that were discussed was, of course, you know we have an endpoint, the SDGs. We do have uh, the means, uh, whether science, technology, financing, trade that are required to get to this endpoint. But we also need to know the pathway, how to get there. And since all the actions on the national level, we need to know also how, what these pathways look like for science and technology to get to this endpoint. And that's, that is basically the gap that these um, uh, STI for SDG roadmaps fill. That is why it's been discussed for a very long time. It's it's at the heart of the discussion of, of bringing back science and technology uh, to the UN debate in, in, in headquarters. So this uh, course is an output from a very established uh, work of the interagency task team under what is called the UN Technology Facilitation Mechanism. You see a lot of familiar faces, so I guess many uh, many of you are involved in this anyway, so I don't need to really give you much of a background. I just want to thank you, um, all those of you who have been involved. I want to thank, of course, uh, UNITAR and DESA for much of the legwork on this uh, online uh, course. The European Commission Joint Research Center, its colleagues who have been extremely active and, and providing all, all the inputs. UNESCO, the World Bank, all for their technical support. I would acknowledge the, the long standing engagement from our colleagues uh, from Japan, Nakamura san, I've seen here, one of the, the key drivers of this, colleagues in OECD, in UNCTAD, in UNIDO, in FAO, ESQUA 
and ask of all of you contributed to this and, 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 and made this really what it is. I also want to thank the champion countries of the Partnership in Action, uh, specifically Ghana and Serbia for, for driving this forward in the discussions in New York. And ultimately, as uh, Stephanie just said, uh, I want to thank for the financial support from the Peace and Development Trust Fund from the government of China. So as you can see, this is a really eclectic group of of supporters of this. Everyone thinks that's an important endeavor. So let me just stop here. I don't think you will find many um, activities in the UN system that has this wide range of supporters. Over to you, Wei. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, uh, it is my great pleasure for me to be here today at this briefing on supporting national capacities through the partnership in action. And the launch of this online open, open on, massive on, uh, open online course. Uh, following Alex very um, exciting, um, broad, um, exciting uh, opening. I'd like to briefly discuss three questions. First, what is the significance of STI for SDG roadmaps and why do we want to focus on it? Human progress has been made, ha has been based on advances of science, technology and innovation. This was clearly seen with a dramatic increase in growth and productivity from various technological revolutions. We are entering a new period of characterized by rapid tech development of emerging technologies. These te emerging technologies and their convergence offer tremendous opportunities and risks. Countries need to put in place effective strategies to use STI for, to further their economic and social development to reach the SDG goals. Hence, they need to take advantage of technologies that already exist, as well as to make effective use of new technologies and to mitigate the risks. Keeping my answer short to the first question, if you don't know where we are going, we will never get there. This is the fundamental logic behind the STI for SDG roadmap approach, which offers countries strategies to develop and implement STI action plans. Harnessing STI is fundamental for global progress. This is why developing effective STI for SDG roadmaps is so crucial. Second question, what are the UN effort geared towards supporting STI roadmapping? Beginning in 2019, UN DESA has built a network of partners throughout the UN system and beyond undertaking substantial analytical and operational work on SDI roadmaps and actions, action plans for SDGs. The global work on the SDI for SDG roadmaps has been launched and DESA together with the two champion countries, Ghana and Serbia, the 10 member group and the IATT partners are now working to enlarge the cause for the next phase of the work, the partnership in action. The work aimed to exchange views on common guidance, principles, and possible frameworks, methodologies for countries preparing STI roadmaps. It supports countries to practice this multi-stakeholder engagement tool to envision, plan, communicate, and facilitate, facilitate actions, track progresses, and foster a learning environment to harness 
STI. A joint guidebook was prepared and translated into eight languages. UNDESA and UNITA have now developed a massive online open course, MOOC, that is based on the operational note prepared by DESA. It is an entry-level, self-paced course, which is available for free on the UN website. Today, we will be launching this e-learning course, now known as MOOC Develop STI Roadmap Level 1. This e-learning course has been a team effort. Development, developments of for a second MOOC are already underway. It is a global, it is now a global public good that you are offered to you. European Commission Joint Research Center is developing a MOOC level two that will build on the resources and experiences collected by the UN ITT workstream on STF SDG roadmaps, such as the, the guidebook and the country cases for the global pilot program. The MOOC will also benefit from the ex expertise and the UN ITT workstream on capacity building. Now, the third question, you may be wondering why you should take this e-learning course. Is this simply to get another certificate and include it into your resume? Or is this some useful tool and knowledge for your day-to-day -day work? Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, my answer will be summarized in a short video, which my colleague will play now. I look forward to your active participation. Thank you. In 2015, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was universally adopted by the UN General Assembly. Since then, despite efforts, the world has seen an increase in socioeconomic inequalities, political instability, and destructive environmental phenomenon amplified by climate change. If we want to achieve our global goals, business as usual cannot remain the default approach. Harnessing the transformational potential of science, technology, and innovation to achieve sustainable development is now urgent and crucial. The massive open online course, Develop and Implement Science, Technology, and Innovation for SDGs Roadmaps Level 1, will assist the countries in the development and implementation of a comprehensive STI for SDGs Roadmap, adapted to the relevant local, national, and international contexts. In this course, participants will learn about the precise steps, methodologies, and examples, as well as the relevant institutional mechanisms to achieve the 2030 Agenda with science, technology, and innovation. Register for the course now. Thank you so much. Back to Stephanie, please. Thank you so much, Wei. That was a, a perfect video to crystallize the, the uh, purpose of this course and kind of get us excited about registering and taking it. So thanks for sharing that. Um, in fact, I'm going to now turn it back to you, Wei, um, to walk us through the rest of the program. So Wei, back over to you. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, as Alex mentioned, we have um, pretty large gathering of all these partners for this uh, for this project and all these partners um, some of them are are in today's uh, program and it's fairly long list of the speakers i'd like to take this opportunity to invite my dear colleagues from um, U european commission joint research center miss monica monica you have floor please
Thank you very much, UAE, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, uh, I would like uh, just to mention from our side a uh, few words about the follow-up uh, of this great initiative of the Massive Online Open Course, pa part two, as it was already introduced. Uh, I wonder if I can share my slides. I don't see the... Um, the option here. If not possible, I will just speak as it is. Um, but uh, just to let you know, uh, we do believe in the European Commission and Joint Research Center that uh, it is of extreme importance to uh, build up uh, knowledge, capacities and relevant methodologies uh, for more and more countries worldwide to um, develop uh, science, technology and innovation for SDGs roadmaps that would be not only well designed, but also possible to implement and, and monitor. So uh, this is why in cooperation with uh, UNDESA and all the uh, colleagues from interagency task team from uh, from different agencies um, that work with Monica, us you together. Have a, you have access to the to Perfect. The share. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just uh, putting this on. Um, OK. Should be OK now, isn't it? Just coming full screen. Yeah, can you see that? In my screen, it's visible. I hope it indeed is. Um, yes, we can see it. Perfect. Um, yeah, so uh, as I was saying, we do believe that it is of uh, utmost importance to really uh, mobilize science technology innovation for the achievement of Agenda 2030 of all the SDGs. Uh, and uh, for that, we not only need methodologies, guidance, uh, uh, good practices that we already have been developing uh, together uh, for a good while, but also capacity building. And capacity building, especially in COVID pandemic, uh, we have seen that we need online resources just as well as uh, uh, as physical trainings, which very often we weren't able to do. So this is why we decided to to support uh, this initiative with the second part of the massive online open course. Uh, uh, what you can see uh, changing here in the slides now is the mock-up of this course. This is not yet the, the, full, uh, the full version, but our intention is to follow up on the great work uh, uh, prepared already by um, UNDESA and uh, an UNITAR uh, as an introduction to the notion of uh, how uh, STI for SDGs roadmaps, how to design them, how to build on them. And uh, we will go more in depth in all the modules of um, of the guidebook we have published together. Uh, you can see here um, the uh, overview of all the modules. Each module uh, consists of in-person videos, interviews with our pilot countries, with the countries that already tried this methodology, with uh, a lot of experts uh, from um, from uh, UN Interagency Task Team on STI for SDGs roadmaps. Uh, and uh, provides opportunity uh, to to use uh, written messages, uh, testing, uh, possibility to to check your knowledge, to to drive self self reflection as well, and uh, to pass a test at the end and uh, receive a certificate for accomplishment of this training. Our intention is to continue working um, on um, the build up of. Uh, of the of the capacities uh, for for the for the design of the roadmaps, not only with this e-learning uh, course, but also uh, to use it as a future resource for blended learning. Uh, apart from the really great cooperation from the work stream on STI for SDGs roadmaps, we've been also working with um, uh, the colleagues uh, responsible for capacity building in the work stream six, uh, and um, here we see opportunity to use this massive online open course as an introductory theoretical part uh, that could be accompanied by blended learning, by uh, physical practice oriented workshops with a lot of case studies and uh, uh, opportunity to not only share the knowledge, but also practice it. So yeah, so we see this, uh, 
development of the of the massive online open course, a little bit as a consolidation of the knowledge that we already generated over those years, but also as a first step towards a, a new adventure uh, where we can uh, uh, use those resources to really more effectively uh, build capacities in a, in a greater number of countries. Uh, so far, global pilot program on STIFR SDGs roadmaps mobilized six of them, but now with the launch of partnership in action, uh, we really have an opportunity to, to spread this approach, to share this, the amazing experience with a lot of global partners uh, uh, all over the world. So we can't wait. We find it very exciting. We are waiting for STI Forum uh, to launch partnership in action and to be meaningful part of that uh, together with the resources we can provide. So thank you very much for that. Uh, and this is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for sharing the latest progress on this mock-up uh, of the e-learning e course. Uh, the European Commission Joint Research Center is now working on. Uh, I'd like to now invite my dear colleague from UNITA, um, which uh, we are showing the real online course. Um, Modina will going to um, show you, give you, highlight some of the features of this online course. Um, and this course are actually now launched today and will be you can registered after today's uh, launch event. Thank you. I, Mon, uh, Modina, please. Thank you very much, Wei. Um, it's a pleasure uh, and privilege to be here and being part of this work. Um, let me uh, quickly share my screen now. Just a second. So, uh, this uh, massive open online course, uh, as Wei mentioned, uh, is uh, has been developed based on the operational note on implementing the SDI for SDGs uh, uh, roadmaps, which in turn operationalizes the guidebook um, itself. And uh, the main um, purpose, uh, the, the course aims to, to strengthen the national capacities of uh, member states in developing and implementing the SDI for SDGs roadmaps and also helps them um, mobilize the international support in their um, endeavor. The course, uh, as I mentioned, is open to everyone. Um, um, who is interested and involved in the process, but uh, with the particular focus on the central agencies and uh, the uh, ministries that are in charge in charge of the development of the national development plans and also the other uh, stakeholders that are part of the um, SDI plans. So uh, the course um, uh, has uh, has been developed and it's hosted on UNITAR's uh, virtual um, learning environment uh, platform. Um, in other words, it's a Moodle platform, uh, and uh, it consists of uh, this is the video that uh, uh, you have seen just now about the course. Uh, it includes a, a syllabus uh, that serves as a learning guide for the course itself. It uh, describes the what is the course is about, the objectives, the methodology, the structure, and all the relevant information is inside the syllabus. As the um, uh, um, uh, main uh, first step of developing the course, we, we identified the, um, and formulated the learning objectives for this course that serve as a guiding principle for the rest of the development of the course. And let me uh, read them out here so it will give you um, an understanding of what um, uh, you're expected to be to be able to do after you take the, the, the course. So first, it's by the end of the course, uh, one uh, should be able to explain what SDI for SDGs roadmaps is and its importance in the national and global agendas, describe the scope and purpose of the various levels of roadmaps, list and explain the six steps in the SDI for SDGs roadmaps development process, uh, discuss the methodologies available for the STI for SDGs roadmaps and what kind of support is needed. And lastly, distinguish the role of government and donors in the process. 
So the idea was uh, to convert the, the operational node in an um, e-learning course that will be uh, that will take the participants into an engaging um, learning uh, experience. So we have developed the, the course using the um, particular storyline um, software. And let me show you the, how the course um, looks like. It's a very interactive uh, course and um, we used a um, scenario based approach uh, to develop the course. We introduced here a fictional uh, country called Southlands that is in the process of developing in implementing the STI for SDGs roadmaps. And the uh, learners uh, through the journey of Southlands will learn um, about the key concepts, about the methodology, about the process and um, or different uh, stakeholders that need to be involved in the process and all about the, the this uh, development and implementation of STI for SDGs roadmaps th through the journey of um, Southlands. Uh, the um, the Southlands is a fictional uh, country, but it's um, has been developed based on uh, drawing the uh, some of the characteristics of the pilot countries of the STI for SDGs roadmaps. So in a way that uh, um, participants and the countries will be able to to relate to the um, fictional um, country. The, the course itself um, uh, introduces a lot of uh, formative assessments that are um, um, introduced to reinforce the, the provided knowledge and also help the, uh, the participants retain the, the acquired knowledge and skills uh, better. So they are introduced through knowledge checks, through small uh, quiz questions or, or other self checks, um, different activities within the course. The course is narrated through a voiceover and also uh, we have here the subtitle section. So this is done for the accessibility purposes so one can follow the voiceover and also the, the subtitles, um, whatever is uh, preferred and uh, possible. Uh, so now let me give a glimpse of uh, what the Southlands is and also give a flavor of the or the course content, how it um, has been developed. Just a second. This is Southlands, a small developing country with a dense jungle, lush green valleys, and a river running through it to capital city. The country is known for its small yet viable commercial and industrial sector. The Southlands government are working on developing an STI and may need some assistance. Would you like to meet some of the citizens involved? Click the markers on the map to learn about them. Here at the Southlands Ministry of Planning, we provide advice and feasibility assessments for national advancement. At the National SDI Council, we communicate and organize science and technology efforts to all of Southlands. Another map that is important for Southlands is the SDI for SDGs roadmaps. It is at the intersection of Southland's National Development Plans, SDI plans, and SDG plans. Who do you think should coordinate such plans? Ideally, it would all be coordinated at the highest level, such as the President's Office, Ministry of Planning, or Ministry of Finance. However, it doesn't really matter where. The key point is that whatever its starting place, developing effective STI for SDG roadmaps requires interaction across the likes of government, academia, industries, entrepreneurs, civil society, and other stakeholders. Click here to see how they can all interact. So this is a glimpse of the course. Um, as you can see, the structure on the left side of the course, um, we then uh, introduce, um, um, take the participants and the Southlands through the process uh, of uh, developing and implementing STI for SDGs roadmaps by um, introducing the and um, providing the information about the core inputs, uh, the consultative process, the six steps that need to be followed uh, in the process, and the whom uh, need to be involved um, in the overall process. Here you can uh, you will find um, a video, the summarizing video about the, the process as well. We then uh, take the uh, participants through the uh, section of roles where we provide the 
uh, the information on the role of government in the whole process. And uh, then we take uh, the learners, um, the participants to the uh, through the support sec uh, section where we provide uh, the information on the um, uh, international community support, um, their uh, their mechanisms and how the um, countries can strengthen the, their capabilities. We also provide uh, here the examples of the, the pilot countries that I mentioned in the operational note where um, one can learn from other countries um, examples um, um, so and the overall methodologies um, um, uh, around this um, uh, process uh, at the end then we provide um, the summary uh, sort of uh, the key messages or takeaways uh, on uh, on this um, course um, and uh, uh, it uh, the course concludes with the this part of the course concludes with the links uh, uh, related to the uh, operational note, the guidebook, and other um, uh, resource um, guide. On this corner, uh, 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 you can see that we've um, uh, added uh, the joint template that is um, provided inside the um uh, the operational note separately so it will be easier for the uh, countries for the participants to access and uh, use it um in in their um, um case so that's the course um the overall main part of the course uh, then we invite the participants to take the, the um, uh, summative assessment, the final assessment of the course that is composed of 15 questions uh, drawn from the um, bank of questions, um, uh, randomly drawn from the bank of questions. And we also invite the uh, participants to take the course evaluation where we hope to receive uh, feedback on how the course was and whether they found it useful and whether the uh, participants achieved the learning objectives and all uh, uh, comments uh, relevant for the course are um, uh, uh, we hope to receive through this um, uh, evaluation uh, uh, survey. And then at the end, uh, once uh, we provide the certificate for the course, um, uh, if the uh, for the participants who achieve the 70 percent uh, uh, in the final assessment uh, within the three allowed um, attempts. So the course, uh, the course um, completion um, certificate is a joint certificate by um, uh, UNDES and UNITAR, uh, as you can see here. Um, that is provided to, to everyone who meets the, the criteria um, I just mentioned. So this is um, um, in a nutshell about the, the course. Uh, I hope um, uh, you will find the, the course useful and interesting um, uh, and uh, will help uh, in um, developing and uh, uh, implementing the SDI for SDGs uh, roadmaps. So I stop uh, sharing my screen and I uh, thank you very much for your attention and back to you. Bye. Thank you so much, Madina, for going through and highlighting the, the key features of this e-learning course. Um, I just want to highlight uh, this is um, uh, a self-paced um, course which um, you can just choose the most convenient time yourself to take the course. Uh, and um, we also share this uh, link on the chat room, so you can also have access to, uh, after the this launch event, you can also have access to, to learn a bit more about this, this course. And if you do have any questions, you can either keep it with you during the Q&A session, you can raise your hand uh, through this virtual um, uh, virtual um, conference uh, conference uh, room uh, or you can just text your question in the uh, in the chat room so that let us know if you have any questions um, I'd like to turn um, to the next speaker um, who are working on this um, who are the the co-lead of uh, UN uh, work stream, uh, IATT work stream six uh, on uh, capacity building activities. Uh, the first speaker is uh, Cornelia from UN UNESCO. 
Cornelia, you have the floor, please. Thank you and uh, good morning, good afternoon to all. Uh, greetings from uh, UNESCO headquarters in Paris and uh, allow me first to congratulate uh, UNDESA and UNITAR for the development and launch of uh, uh, this uh, e-learning course, uh, which we consider uh, not only important for um, strengthening capacities, but also as important too for raising awareness on the uh, importance of um, STI for the SDGs. And uh, since today uh, the subject is also uh, uh, very much on capacity building, I'm very pleased to, to, to share with you the, the work uh, that was done and is being uh, implemented by the UN Interagency Task Team on Capacity Building, uh, the Workstream uh, 6, which was established in 2017 uh, as part of the technology facilitation uh, mechanism. A uh, few, few words on the work stream. It is composed by uh, several uh, UN entities and development partners. Uh, we have on board uh, agencies including uh, UNCTA, the UNIDO, uh, UNU, WIPO, uh, UNESCO, uh, the various uh, UN regional economic commissions, um, also uh, partners like uh, uh, the European Commission Joint Research Center. And uh, we have together worked on uh, developing um, a joint training program on science, technology and innovation uh, related issues, uh, uh, in particular uh, relevant for the sustainable development goals, uh, on uh, policy and uh, policy design and implementation, policy instruments uh, uh, design also and implementation, monitoring and evaluation. Um, so we have pulled our um, respective uh, competencies and knowledge, uh, also experience on these uh, topics to design a, a joint training program, uh, which we delivered for the first time in uh, 2018 uh, in Jordan uh, in collaboration with UN Esquim. Uh, this was followed uh, um, by another uh, regional course in Panama in 2019. And later, due to the constraints uh, uh, with COVID, uh, we have worked with the colleagues in the Workstream 6 on um, redesigning, reshape uh, training program in a non -part. Um After that, we have delivered uh, four series of uh, online training sessions, uh, which were attended uh, uh, by more than uh, 400 participants, mainly government uh, officials uh, in charge of science, technology and innovation issues um, in uh, approximately 60 countries in different parts of the, of the world. Uh, the latest uh, uh, course that we have organized together was uh, in December last year um, in Africa and uh, we organized this course jointly with uh, the Southern African Development Community. Um, so this was a few words about our uh, past and ongoing activities, but uh, I will also uh, I will leave now the, the floor to to my colleague uh, from UNCTAD, Dimo Czavlowski, who would uh, also share with you some uh, um, of our uh, future plans and also relevance, uh, relevant also um, to, the, to this MOOC. Thank you. Over to you, Dimo. Thank you, Cornelia. Uh, first of all, let me join Cornelia and congratulations to to, to Dessa and, uh, and UNITAR uh, producing this excellent course. Uh, we are somewhat envious, uh, naturally, but also very happy that, that uh, things are moving forward. Of course, this pandemic has caused many of us to rethink our, uh, our training approaches and at, at Workstream 6, we went uh, full full throttle in trying to deliver something on a webinar online basis. <clears throat> having accumulated some experience, we're having reflections these days and these will be discussed, I think, this week and in the weeks to come in uh, in, in moving towards a more self-learning uh, uh, method in order to improve our outreach even further. Uh, I think as a first step, what we will be trying to do is trying to uh, uh, produce the various uh, uh, presentation and lectures that we have for for online delivery that does not require a live presence of the participant. In this sense, we are looking for for, for hosts uh, for for these videos, 
uh, whether we can find a host in one of the projects, either the JRC or the or the the IATT roadmaps uh, project on their platforms or not it is to be seen. But uh, in any case, uh, we don't see our, our content to be uh, in any way particularly exclusive to any to any particular platform, and we'll go with whatever we can uh, we can match. Unfortunately, uh, 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 unlike uh, uh, what we've seen today, which is really excellent, but I have to say that we have been working with what we have, which is very little, and uh, lack of funding is 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 a serious problem. And I hope that uh, past this STI forum event, that it will become clear among uh, member states that some level of, of funding uh, support for the for the uh, for the interagency task team uh, is needed to do these kind of activities that require uh, external resources and some ex external expertise. Uh, even if we can do the vast majority of things that are that are required, still uh, developing a platform as as we've seen with Unitar is a fairly complex task as as well. So let me close by saying that yes, we are on the discussion. We'll be looking for a, for a host for some of our content in the in the near future, and we will share with you very shortly an overview of our of our of our training work. Uh, as Cornelia said, it is it is really um, uh, very much addressed to different policy phases and policy elements, and hopefully uh, shortly after the STI forum event, we can we can wrap this up and start uh, our own development in collaboration with our UN colleagues and partners. So thank you very much, uh, great show, and uh, really look forward to uh, to drawing in participation. Of course, from from our Workstream Six uh, point of view, but also from UNCTAD's point of view. So I'll put my UNCTAD hat on for a second. I'll be very happy to guide uh, 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 policymakers and and STA experts from our member states that participate in our STA programs towards this uh, excellent training course for their own benefit as well. So thank you once again, and see you and talk to everyone very soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Cornelia. Thank you, Dimo. Uh, don't leave. Uh, maybe there are some questions to you. Uh, so um, as you can see, colleagues, uh, it's um, there's a lot of expertise and also effort from the UN side. Um, and definitely this MOOC level one is a starting point. Uh, we are actually moving forward with more content coming up. Uh, including the ones uh, just presented by our colleague for you from European Commission Joint Research Center on this um, level two on the more in-depth um, uh, and probably more uh, advanced uh, methodologies um, uh, on doing this uh, STF SDG road mapping. And there's also a broader work done by um, the other young entities uh, led by ONCTED and, uh, and UNESCO. On, on the broader STI policies and uh, which they are doing um, now. Uh, so you also heard uh, their 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 request. So if you have any suggestions and uh, and also comment, uh, please uh, do let us know. Really appreciate for that. So um, this is basically uh, concluded the part one of the present of this workshop, basically showing uh, what we are doing and what this uh, MOOC online course um, about. Um, we like to now go into the part two, actually to invite our partners to provide their initial feedback. Uh, and the first, uh, the key partner is, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Peggy Visers uh, from European uh, Union uh, delegation to the United Nations. Peggy, please. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I see my camera doesn't turn on. Maybe it's because I'm logged in as a guest, but I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you well. Thank you, Peggy. Ah, wonderful. Ah, and I see the cameras also starting to work. No, thank you uh, very much. Um, on behalf of the EU, uh, I would like, of course, to, to stress the importance of uh, strengthening capacities in STI roadmaps development because we do believe that STI is a very key tool for the achievement of the uh, SDGs. I would also like to praise the important efforts of the um, interagency task team to deliver capacity building activities, both in person and of course also online during the pandemic, uh, really to a huge number of stakeholders in, in several regions. 
and most recently, I believe, in Latin America and Africa, with the uh, active participation, indeed, of the Joint Research Center. Um, we are really satisfied with the important achievement uh, in the preparation of the MOOC by DESA, as well as in the development of the more advanced MOOC um, by the GRC, and that will be uh, ready at the end of the year. So we also hope that um, many will follow that course. Um, I'd like to highlight the contribution provided by the GRC in the elaboration of the guidebook for the preparations of SDI for SDGs roadmaps, uh, because that is the core input to the MOOC, um, we believe. And I think most importantly to all and everybody here, we really call on all that are present here today, uh, on all the UN member states to disseminate uh, the MOOC uh, through their institutional channel channels, because I think uh, the course, of course, has much more value if we all actually follow the course and the right people know about this course and, and we will follow it. So we really call on all to do so. In closing, I would like to uh, reaffirm that the European Union is fully committed to continue the collaboration with the interagency task team on SDI for SDGs. So thank you very much for organizing today and happy to see you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peggy, for your uh, very encouraging and positive remarks. Uh, I'd like to turn to the next speaker, uh, our our friend and also colleague from um, from Japan, uh, Dr. Mok Nakamura. He is a former uh, UN Secretary General's ten member group member, and he's the president uh, Emirates uh, Japan Science Technology Agency advisor. Uh, for the Engineering and Academy of Japan. Dr. Nakamura, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Uh, you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, congratulations to DESA, UNIT, EU, JRC, and relevant organizations for developing the massive open online course on SDR for SDG roadmaps. Since the launch of the 2030 agenda, we have made uh, valuable progress in the SDGs, but there are still many, many challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic has revolutionized the nature of science, technology, and innovation in emergencies. Intensive development of vaccine and medicines, utilization of data science and open science, reviews of scientific advice system, and more. Such innovations in science are also important for decarbonization and other pressing issues. Many countries have agreed to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 or close to it in response to global warming. In today's war in Ukraine, a review of the pathways to energy security and carbon neutrality is inevitable, but we continue to commit to the goal of limiting climate warming to less than 1.5 degrees under any circumstances. While there are many good practices in the efforts so far, the problem is that policy coordination for resolving trade-offs and creating synergies is inadequate, and the collaboration between sectors is not yet well organized nor systematized. In order to attain the SDGs, we need to implement SDI more comprehensively and systematically for the SDGs. The United Nations IATT has played a leading role in the development and implementation of the SDI roadmaps for, the, for that purpose. In order to spread the roadmap globally, it is important to expand the pilot program and develop global joint activities to promote SDI's capacity building technology transfer and blockage activities under the partnership in action. We hope that the massive open online course will be a great success. I stop here and return the floor to Wei. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nakamura. Thank you for your always continued support and encouragement. Without you, we cannot progress so far. Thank you so much for your support. You. And I also would like to acknowledge uh, colleagues from Japanese mission also uh, present today. So again, uh, thank you so much for your uh, for your support. Um, I'd like to turn to the next speaker, uh, Ms. Rongfang 
Wang. She's a science technology innovation counselor from China, China's mission to the UN. Uh, Dr. Wang, you have floor, please. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I would thank our UN colleagues for your briefings and uh, your strong coordination in the STI for SDGs roadmaps. And I also like to congratulate on the remarkable outcomes of the roadmaps and the launch of the MOOC today. And I'm very impressed by the unique and facilitating role of the roadmaps. And I feel very glad that China contributes to the MOOC through the UN Peace and, and Development Fund to expand the impact of the roadmaps beyond the pilot countries to reach the wider community across the world. As the biggest developing country, China always contributes to the 2030 Agenda. We took the lead in releasing China's national plan on implementation of the 2030 Agenda. Last year at the General Assembly, our President Xi Jinping put forward Global Development Initiative in the efforts to build the synergies with the 2030 Agenda and to promote international cooperation in the eight priority areas to address our common challenges like climate change and pandemics uh, like COVID-19 for a shared future. And back in the year 2016, China launched the development plan for China's innovation demonstration zones for the implementation of the 2030 agenda. And this implementation plan bears many similarities with the UN SCI for SDG road maps and with common visions and agenda, China will explore cooperation on the global and constructive work of the roadmaps. And uh, the first thing, uh, the, the first thing we can do perhaps is to to publicize the mock so that we can it can reach the wide communities back in China. And we may also cooperate on capacity building, as many of our colleagues mentioned uh, in the previous statement. And uh, we as our uh, Japanese colleagues say that uh, we may also share some of our action plans and initiatives in carbon dioxide peak and in neutralities, uh, especially our STI action plans uh, like uh, technology transfer initiatives and accessory. So I think that there exist potentials, great potentials for cooperation in STI uh, for SDGs roadmaps. And I would look forward to this further discussions in the future, and thank you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang, for your for your remarks and also for your comment on the, the probably the next phase of our work, uh, which we actually uh, now focusing on some subject specific uh, sectors on the STF, SDG road mapping approach. Uh, one of them is also not only highlighted by you, but also Dr. Nakamura on this climate change challenges. So uh, definitely we need more uh, expertise and knowledge and resources gathered through this platform. And we can also move to the next level for uh, for bringing more like valuable resources to the member state and strengthening their capacity on STI for SDGs. Um, I'd like to invite the next speaker um, from um, from Ghana. Ghana is the uh, champion country of um, uh, of STF SDG road mapping. Uh, they are also one of the two uh, uh, co-lead for the uh, for the partnership in action, which was mentioned uh, by the colleagues um, before. So um, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Jasuni from uh, Minister Councillor. Jasuni, you have floor, please. Good morning, colleagues, and uh, thank you very much uh, for the floor. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to join you uh, this morning for this very important uh, event uh, for Ghana. Uh, the uh, this event is very important for us and uh, as lead, uh, playing a lead role in the partnership in action, uh, SDGs for uh, roadmaps, it's of immense importance to 
our uh, national plan for uh, implementing uh, technology and uh, driving uh, the SDGs. So from our point as a, as a government, we take this uh, very important and we'd offer all the support and uh, necessary to ensure that uh, this moves forward. Thank you very much. Thank you so, Thank much, you so much, Dr. Jasuni, for your great uh, support and your leadership. Uh, we're looking forward to work closely with you to support you, uh, and hopefully we can um, we can launch this uh, partnership in action uh, in the coming week um, in the in, con in conjunction with the STI forum in May. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to turn to the next speaker. Uh, from the the, the champion country, the second champion country, uh, Serbia. Serbia is um, uh, together with Ghana is uh, co-leading this uh, proposed partnership in action. And uh, Dr. Viktor Nadovic, uh, he is the uh, he is um, uh, one of the big uh, our strong supporter from Serbia. Uh, he is the director of Serbia Accelerating Innovation and the Growth Entrepreneurship Project, Ministry of Education, Science, Technological Development, Serbia. Dr. Victor, the floor is yours, please. This is Monica from the site. Uh, I have a message from Victor that he's trying to connect, but he has some trouble. Uh, so he should appear in a minute now, but maybe we can uh, move to the next speaker first. OK, sure. Thank you so much, Monica, letting us know. Yeah. Uh, we can move to the next speaker. Um, we actually have a quite number of um, the current UN Secretary General's 10 member groups to support technology facilitation mechanism representing today. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite the first 10 member groups member to provide their comment. Um, first is Dr. Hossi Roman. Sir, you have a floor, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, this is an enormous step forward. In, in line with uh, what we want to uh, uh, achieve. Uh, I think uh, that at this stage of uh, mankind's uh, uh, situation, we need a, a route and we need a path, and that path has to be established only through education, skilling, uh, training, and common goals, common collaborative schemes, and uh, information systems. And this uh, initiative that has uh, to a great extent been um, the uh, result of the effort of many people, among them I want to uh, uh, distinguish, uh, of course, Dessa, but uh, uh, Dr. Nakamura, who has done so much uh, to make this happen. And, uh, and I think we all should be uh, uh, terribly excited by, by this. I myself am going to take the course, you know, just to to not only to learn but also to 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 see what what's there and 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 to uh, be able to uh, to respond and 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 give some some feedback. So really, congratulations uh, to um, all of you. Uh, I'm I'm terribly happy and uh, and I think uh, humanity can finally think that we can achieve this uh, sustainable development goals in in uh, in the next uh, years thank you thank you so much uh, dr Jose Ruman. um we actually also uh, received your um, uh, your background paper for the actually the next phase of our work uh, together with uh, talis he's also uh, joining us today um and this also gave us really like a substantive input and guidance uh, to the next level of the work on the STF SDG roadmap. So really thanks, thanks you uh, for being with us and also continuous support and sharing your expertise and knowledge with us. Thank you so much. So our next speaker is um, 
Professor Talis uh, Jonah. Uh, he's uh, from Riga Technological Technical University, Latvia. Dr. Talis, floor is yours, please. Thank you, Wayne. In fact, I'm also going to sign for the course. I already checked how to do this. So I think this is a, a very <clears throat> important meeting for all of us to realize how important the uh, MOOC education is uh, going to be in future. It's already now, but it's going to be in future more and more important. And I think that the pandemic clearly demonstrated that how important the digital skills are actually for all countries and the ones who are able to, you know, cope with the the technologies and, and use the opportunities uh, uh, like, like this, they have an advantage. So uh, I'm really happy that this uh, initiative is, is being uh, uh, so uh, pronounced in, in, in these last few few years. And of course, as a 10 member group, we our task is to find ways how to really facilitate uh, to countries to go for SDGs. And, and this is uh, the one way using uh, digital, digital technologies. And I think that the advantage of these kind of courses are that we are able to connect to the best experts in the field and learning through their experience how to build innovation ecosystems in their country. So I'm, I'm really uh, I'm happy that the, this course is also, as it was shown before, it is designed in very uh, kind of innovative way. We see it, it goes through the examples. You see some very good interaction between the speakers and, and, and people taking the course. And then you, and you, you can also take it any time. So I think this is a, it's a very good uh, way forward. And um, I'm really um, hope, hoping that more and more people are joining this initiative. And I, through my channels, also disseminate it uh, into our country. Thank you. Thank you so much, Talis, for your encouragement uh, and really appreciate for your support. Uh, as I mentioned, you and uh, Jose Roman jointly prepared a uh, policy brief and also background paper um, are the substantive input to our next level, next phase of uh, the work on STF SDG roadmap. Uh, and um, we are actually learning by doing uh, ourselves um, kind of like an innovative approach for us. We never, this is the first uh, e-learning course we have been developed and it's kind of like excitement too because as you said, it's um, uh, it's uh, fairly like um, uh, easy for people to take uh, in terms of um, uh, the in, uh, issuing the interactive part. You don't re really need to read through the text and so on. Actually, it's coming through the sound and the video. And also we start with the basic knowledge, very basic entry level uh, content. So um, and at the end you will get this um, um, this certificate. Um, once you complete the course and it's a self paced, uh, you can uh, if some part of the knowledge you want to listen again and um, watch again, you can do so. Like, uh, um, so just take your time. So it doesn't no one rush you. You can just use your own time to to take it. So those are the uh, things we really we think it's uh, at this time it's um, it's quite uh, quite uh, useful for people to fit in their busy schedule. So. Um, so really appreciate uh, Thales for your encouragement and for this uh, this part of the work we are still piloting and also um, exploring the new ways to reach out and we really appreciate from today's launch we can further reaching out to other colleagues other other potential participant. Thank you so much Thales. Um, now I really have a pleasure to uh, invite uh, Dr. Victor I understand that you are really busy and you are traveling, so really appreciate for sharing your time with us. Uh, sorry for the technical problem for connecting, and uh, now we finally have you, and we'd like to invite you to say a few words from Serbia part for perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vey. Uh, do you hear me? Do you hear me? 
Yes, we hear you well and we can okay. see you well. Yes. OK, thank you, because uh, I had uh, a serious uh, technical issues to, to fix uh, before I joined. Uh, I'm not uh, at home. I'm not in uh, Belgrade uh, uh, as we have uh, a series of meetings this week uh, uh, in several places. And uh, sorry for that. Uh, I was late uh, for, for this for this meeting, but uh, I, I really wanted to express uh, um, the position and expectation uh, from my country. First of all, I would like to uh, to pass my uh, greetings to all participants today. Uh, then I would like to uh, say that um, uh, launching of this uh, massive open online course is uh, really important uh, uh, to build up uh, the capacity. Uh, it's our opinion of STI for SDGs roadmaps. Uh, also, uh, that uh, we, I mean Serbia, uh, will be happy to, to share all gained experience within the, the, the global partners with uh, all other countries that uh, may join uh, in, in this uh, endeavor. And also that uh, from our position, uh, we would like to, um, to invite everyone to join the, the partnership in action uh, that will be launched during the upcoming uh, STI forum. Uh, together uh, with Ghana, uh the, these two countries uh out of uh, six already piloted uh actually co-chair uh this uh, this process and we are really happy to to do so together with with uh, uh together with ghana and we are really open uh, to to share uh this uh, this experience we will be uh featured in um, this uh, um, uh, massive open online course part two uh, developed by JRC in the cooperation with the UN IATT. Uh, it is just in short, uh, I'm so sorry that I didn't hear previous speakers, but uh, I hope I will uh, learn from the minutes and uh, also in communication with uh, uh, Vey, Monica and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Victor, for your great uh, encouragement and support throughout the the project uh, we uh, we actually have uh, the serbia uh, case studies reflected in this mock um, and uh, together with other case studies from the pilot country ghana and other pilot countries so i really encourage uh, colleagues to um, uh, take um, your time to uh, to to go through this e-learning course uh, and benefiting the experience uh, from those countries. Um, Modina from UNITA presented that we have uh, this fictionary, fictionary country called South Line, but actually we also have a real country in <laughs> the case studies uh, in this uh, in this e-learning course. Um, so it's combined uh, the fictionary um, planning processes and also the real cases examples uh, and one of them are coming from Serbia. Thank you so much Victor for your for your support. Uh, yeah. You can count on DESA support especially on Thank the you. partnership in action uh, and we really want to uh, to, to take uh, um, take advantage of this uh, this uh, upcoming STI forum in in months from now to to um, raise further awareness and rally the support for this uh, for this process on STF or SDG roadmap. Thank you Thank so you. much, Victor. Um, OK, so uh, our next speaker is um, is uh, another member of the UN Secretary General's 10 member group to support technology facilitation mechanism uh, from China. Um, Dr. Professor Yung Long Lu. He's a chair per professor of Xiamen University, uh, China. Uh, Dr. Dr. Lu, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Um, congratulations on the launch of the massive online courses. It's a good move and to strengthen the uh, communications and also coordinations among different countries and even different end users 
for the delivery of SDGs globally. As a, a UN 10 member group, I am interested in getting the feedback and from the uh, end users and how the uh, roadmap for SDGs in different countries have been made and how or whether the technology has been uh, helpful in promoting the delivery of SDGs in different countries and how the uh, 10 member group can help the, the countries in developing especially new technology or providing new technology guidelines and for the for the different countries and to implement the SDGs and especially we may um, by using the platform to share the experience to to communicate with each other on how to promote the technology development and technology transfer and applications in different countries for the final and implementation of SDGs. Of course, uh, finally, I would like to um, you know, take the liberty as the 10 member group member and to provide you with any assistance in sharing other um, experience and technology and also to work with you to uh, to promote the uh, SDG delivery. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lu, for your um, for your continued support. I want to acknowledge uh, the the input you have been provided uh, before the uh, before the event on this uh, green product, green design. And this is a substantial input to this work, and we definitely want to um, to share this um, this knowledge with a broader audience. And this definitely will uh, it will uh, help us in the next phase of our work on STF SD roadmap. Uh, just wonder uh, some problem with showing your camera, but I just wonder if you have. Uh, um, can switch on your camera or not from your side. Um, OK, so maybe uh, we can turn to the next speaker from the 10 member group. The next speaker is uh, Ms. Maki Kawai, Uni University of uh, Koyo, uh, Tokyo, Japan. Dr. Maki, please, the floor is yours. It doesn't seem like she's in the meeting, um, maybe also due to the late hour for, for, for colleagues from Japan. Um, but uh, just want to acknowledge her continuous support to this work. Uh, I understand there's uh, also a colleague from Kenya, uh, from the 10 member group, Dr. Salami, is also joined today. I'd like to turn the floor to her to see uh, to invite her to to comment on our work. Ms. Salome, the floor is yours, please. It doesn't seem like she's also not in the. I saw her before in this virtual meeting room, but it doesn't look like she's she's with us right now. Um, OK, so uh, now we tend to the next uh, section on the Q&A. We like to open the floor to all participants. If you have any comments, questions, uh, you may want to raise now. The floor is open.
Uh, I can see um, colleagues from China Mission, Dr. Rongfang Wang. You have the floor, please. Uh, just a squeeze some time for some advertisement of SCI forum. Yeah, I'm very glad to see that uh, the SCI for SDGs roadmap uh, has been actually on the agenda of the ministerial meeting. And uh, yeah, I guess that uh, we can have many insights from the ministers to push forward uh, the wider cooperation in the maps, uh, in the SCI for SDG maps, yeah, especially in scientific and technological communities. And here, actually, I would also like to say that China also contributes to this SCI forum by organizing two side events. So when uh, the concept note is ready, I would like to happy to circulate them. And uh, I hope that uh, the member states can invite uh, uh, the interesting uh, participants from your countries and to share the lessons and the experience that China has for promoting SD, SDGs uh, in China in terms of uh, promoting uh, quality education through open science as well as our uh, practice of uh, demonst innovation demonstrating zones in China. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang. Um, yes, it's a great point to highlight uh, uh, the connection from here to the STI forum. We actually uh, want to take this opportunity to bring your attention this this ministerial session during the STI forum. One of the key guiding questions is related to the STI for SD roadmap. So if um, uh, if there is opportunity for the high level delegates from your country to participate this ministerial session, uh, you can choose uh, to address particularly this question, uh, among other guiding questions. So thank you so much for, for bringing to um, to the attention. The second is on the, the side events. Thank you so much for, for China to uh, organize two side events around the STI forum to share China's experience, uh, especially on, the, on this um, sustainable development um, innovation pilot zones. Um, and those experience uh, will, uh, I understand they have covered different contexts and different situations um, in China, uh, and probably it will be the very valuable experience for sharing with other countries uh, with similar context. So thank you so much for bringing attention to us. So um, again, the, the floor is open. If you have uh, questions, uh, or comment, please you raise your hand or just unmute yourself. You can just introduce yourself and um, raise a question or comment. If no more question, we'd like to go to our closing section. I'd like to invite my colleague from UNITA uh, Ms. Alina Pruden, she's a senior specialist, a strategic implementation of 2030 Agenda Unit, UNITA. Alina, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much, uh, Vey. Uh, I will keep my closing remarks short. Uh, a lot has been said about the importance of a comprehensive approach to the STI for SDG roadmaps. Uh, that would help account for environmental and social impacts, but also leverage uh, the emerging technologies in, in a much more strategic manner. Uh, this has, has been a very successful event, um, reflecting the uh, power of a vibrant collaboration of a community of key stakeholders uh, from the UN, uh, UN member states, European Commission, who have worked hard uh, to uh, convene within the interagency task team, uh, build knowledge, and uh, also now develop learning materials to help strengthen capacities of uh, national governments and other stakeholders uh, to better harness the potential of science, technology, and innovation for the implementation of the SDGs. 
And as a training partner, uh, we at UNITAR have been very keen to contribute to this objective uh, by leveraging our own expertise in adult learning, uh, instructional design, and also very long-standing experience uh, in working with the um, uh, delivering training uh, to government officials. Uh, we hope that this introductory course, you will find this introductory course uh, useful. And also, we would appreciate receiving your feedback uh, via the evaluation uh, questionnaire that is provided at the end of the course that can help also improve uh, um, uh, in the future and also learn some lessons. Uh, please do not hesitate to share the information, as many of you have said, through your networks and with colleagues. And uh, we also look uh, forward to the future developments related to other um, activities, important activities related to building capacity on the STI for SDG roadmaps. And uh, finally, uh, let me thank you all of you for, for attending uh, this event on behalf of the organizers, as well as thank uh, they for leading this important work and also all the panelists and um, speakers for their um, uh, important and interesting contributions. And uh, I wish a very nice evening or rest of the day to all of you, depending on where you are located. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alina. I like to actually at the very end to thank uh, everyone to join today's event. Uh, if I allow me, I would like to invite everyone, if possible, to turn on your camera. Uh, and, and we want to just have a record, like a screenshot of um, of uh, a group photo, some kind of a group photo. <laughs> oh, I can see my friend. <laughs> now I can see a lot of friends. <laughs> when you turn on your camera, I can see you. Thank you so much, uh, Luto, Lud Ludo, uh, uh, Guto, and uh, Mar Maurice. Um, okay, so maybe we can just have one screenshot. Uh, Monica, great. So I will just do from my end, big smile. One more. OK, thank you so much, colleagues. Looking forward to the next exchange. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.